Let's look at how the tool calculates net delay. In this module, we'll look at what wire load models are and how they're used to calculate net delays. Um, we'll also identify the different file formats that are used in the different tools uh, so that uh, you can calculate the wire delays. You use different metal layers to connect different cells in your design and these metal layers become the interconnects or the wires and they inherently have a delay because of the resistance and capacitance of the interconnect itself or the metal layer itself. So this interconnect delay is also known as wire delay or net delay and uh, what you would notice is that all of these uh, interconnects are uh, naturally positively unate and uh, also uh, the net delays uh, when calculated are actually typically calculated from 50% of the input to 50% of the output and uh, the timing arc of the net basically connects the pin to pin timing arcs of the cells and uh, when you want to combine uh, all of these different timing arcs into one single path uh, you actually traverse through the nets, through the cells, and so on, uh, depending on the transition that is happening, whether it's rising to falling, falling to rising, rising to rising, or falling to falling. And all of these different combinations combine. And most tools, uh, they use uh, these different rising and falling calculations and look for the worst case delay. And that worst case delay for the entire path is what's uh, used uh, later on for verification against uh, the timing constraints. Physical tools actually use routing and extraction to determine the actual wire delays, but the front-end tools like synthesis tools do not have that luxury, so they need to rely on wire delay estimation. So wire delay estimation can be done either through wire load models or some kind of um, layout estimation tools, um, like uh, the one here, it's uh, physical layout estimation, PLE. Uh, so either one of these can actually be used. And uh, one of the things to note about wire load models is that wire loads are statistical and they're calculated based on the nearest area. So based on a block size, we determine what the um, wire length must be uh, and uh, you know, use the fan out and loads to accurately estimate the maximum wire length that um, uh, would actually be then used to calculate the resistance and capacitance and thus the delay. So this whole thing could actually be very uh, tedious. So even identifying the correct block size uh, for wire loads is actually difficult. So, and then for correlation to the actual place and route tools, again, it becomes really difficult even with the custom wire load models. So, uh, but one simple thing is that the wire load models are there and you can actually use them. Um, so Foundry supplies these wire load models and you can actually plug them in along with your libraries to calculate your delays. Whereas uh, nowadays with the PLE tools, if you provide a, a left library, uh, which is the layout library, and uh, the capacitance table and the floor plan, they try to uh, calculate, again, uh, dynamically, um, but still, it's a, it's a measured uh, delay. But these uh, kind of correlation-wise uh, actually seem to be better uh, than the wireless models. So, some of the types of uh, routing that you see here uh, are actually what is employed by the physical tools. And now these wire load models and PLE should actually correlate to those uh, kind of uh, routing models. The wire load models are calculated based on the average statistical net length um, over many designs. And therefore, uh, because uh, you use this kind of Poisson distribution and determine uh, what is the average net length uh, for uh, those nets uh, in a certain block size, uh, you actually come up with these average statistical values that you then plug in to determine what is the corresponding RNC 
and uh, the resistance and capacitance. And then uh, you, uh, based on that length, and then you calculate the delay of that particular net based on that. So obviously these are statistically weighted and uh, you have these wire loads that are sort of pessimistic because of that inherent uh, statistical behavior and they might be unreliable for uh, some designs. But because they provide a good estimate, you still uh, could use them for critical path analysis, um, you know, and people have been using them, especially right after synthesis stage and so on and so forth, and uh, also as a good starting point for synthesis. So basically, you determine an area that a particular net fits in, and from there, uh, you use the wire load selection table and select the block area that uh, encloses the area of the net, and then you use the wire load model to estimate that particular uh, wire length, and then you uh, use the capacitance multiplier and resistance multiplier to determine the uh, actual RC or the delay of the net. And so therefore, uh, you basically start out with these block sizes. And so um, depending on the mode that is used, so there are multiple modes, that is the top mode, the enclosed mode, and the segmented mode. So depending on the modes that are being used, uh, varying block sizes uh, are selected for the wire load model selection table. And so um, you can also generate these custom wire load models uh, based on your design from uh, specific uh, place and raw tools. And you can use those um, instead of using the statistical wire load models that uh, are provided by your library vendor. So basically this example shows the wire load selection table and if uh, the block area is between 0 and 203, then basically the tool selects the B.5.5 wire load model. So the actual wire load model um, kind of looks like this, uh, where you have these kind of resistance multiplier and capacitance multipliers, and uh, the uh, RC is now calculated based on uh, the capacitance of the wire times resistance of the wire. Try this activity to test your understanding. So when initially when you start out with your synthesis, uh, you're using the wire load models. Uh, but then when you get to your placement route and uh, your placement route is done, then you now can generate um, the extracted data, uh, which is either in the form of a SPEF or an SDF. And uh, so this extracted data uh, can be passed back to your synthesis tools and this passing back is called back annotation. So you can actually uh, send that information back to synthesis to get more accurate uh, timing data for your net delays. And synthesis can now do a better job at optimizing the rest of the design based on the available information. Extraction tools can actually create models for your RC network and then use that RC network to come up with some sort of uh, compression mechanism and uh, so therefore the reduction mechanism and generate these uh, models, either 2D models or 3D models or 2.5D models of your layout. And basically uh, those RC models when reduced give you either the RSPF or DSPF or SPEF. Um, the SPEF is the widely used format and this is what is later on uh, by the delay calculators converted into actual delays. Uh, so, and you can actually take either the SDF to feed back into your synthesis or um, the SPEF itself uh, can actually be used to feed back. So either way, 
this process is called extraction. So one of the steps of back annotation would be delay calculation. If we are feeding uh, the tools uh, delays of the nets, then obviously we need to have a delay calculator that actually does that portion of uh, converting your RC network into a delay network. And so that process is called delay calculation. And uh, usually uh, statistical um, uh, analysis requires uh, the net delays be provided uh, either through an SDF or um, you know the SPEF then uh, converted internally through uh, the delay calculators and then used to plug in the net delays uh, when uh, doing your optimization. So either which way, uh, those net delays are calculated and so uh, delay calculation plays an important piece of your whole back annotation process and the accuracy of your uh, net delays depend on both the extraction tools as well as the delay calculation uh, mechanism that is being used. Different formats uh, provide different levels of accuracy and uh, run times. So some of the larger file sizes come with uh, longer run times and therefore uh, you know, it may take more time and to actually generate these particular um, uh, uh, files. And of course, um, when you actually reduce them and make it simpler, it's actually easier for human interaction, it's easier to debug, and also uh, the delay calculation is actually something that is happening uh, in either the front end or the back end, depending on uh, where you uh, basically, um, you know, do your daily calculation. So you can start out with uh, DSPF uh, or you can start out with the SPEF and then uh, bring that information uh, directly into your synthesis tool and then let the synthesis tool do the delay calculation or you can actually do the delay calculation ahead of time and then bring in an STF. So either which way, it all depends on um, what formats are being used, what to the delay calculators. So you actually kind of, you know, uh, try and um, uh, justify the runtime with the amount of accuracy that you uh, prefer. And so you generate uh, these kind of correlation numbers that correlate between your uh, front-end tools and your back-end tools and uh, sacrifice some accuracy uh, so that uh, you can actually meet your uh, design goals faster.